Welcome back. I'm now answering a question from S1, uh, June 2016, the legacy paper. Okay, not the uh, IAL paper, the legacy paper. I've been asked to answer this question by one of my students. Um, in fact, he only asked me to answer the last parts of the question. However, sometimes it's a bit difficult to understand what's happening. Um, you know, if you just join a question halfway through or at the end. So let's just do the whole question. Some of you might benefit from, from some of the things here. Now it says, a uh, midwife records the weight in kilograms of a sample of 50 babies born at a hospital. Her results are given in the table below. So you've got the weights in categories, in grouped frequency. Okay, you've got the frequencies and you've got the midpoint of the weights. Okay, so that's what they've told you. They've also told you that the sum of the um, frequency times the square of the midpoint is equal to this value, which should come in later on anyway. A histogram has been drawn to represent these data. <clears throat> the bar representing the weight from 2 to 3 has a width of 1 centimeter and a height of 4 centimeters. Calculate the width and height of the bar representing a weight of 3 to 3.5. Okay, so first of all, the weight of the bar, that's not much of a deal. We'll, we'll deal with that. Um, but the height of the bar in a histogram is not given by the frequency. The height of the bar is determined by what's called the frequency density. Because we want the area to be representative of the frequency rather than the height of the bar, seeing as the widths are varying. Okay, So to make it fair, the area of the bar represents the frequency rather than the height of the bar. Okay, sorry, rather, yeah, rather than the height of the bar. So the frequency density, which I'm going to put FD here, is needed in order to compensate for the different widths. And the frequency density is the frequency of a group divided by how wide the bar is of that group, how wide the column of, of the bar for that particular group is. All right? So for the, for the first group, for example, the frequency is 1, and the width of the bar is 2. Okay, so the frequency density will be 0 0.5, 1 divided by 2. And for the second group, it's going to be the frequency density is going to be 8 divided by the width of the bar, which is 1, which is 8. Okay, for the third bar, and now we're only concerned with the 2 to 3 bar and the 3 to 3.5 bar. So it's only these two that we really care about in this question. Okay, so we're not going to bother doing it for the rest of them. So let's just look at this one now. So it's, three, it's going to be the, the frequency density is equal to the frequency, which is 17, divided by the width of the bar, which is 0 0.5. Now that's 17 times 2, which is 34. So those are the frequency densities of the bars that we are concerned with in this question. Okay. Okay, now... So, let's go ahead and deal with this question. So, um, what we can do here is we can make a little type of, um, let's call it a little type of schedule. We can say, all right, let's look at the, the width of the bars. So, we're going to have, let's do with the width of the bar and the height of the bar. Okay, so we got information about the two to two, two so let's, no, let's do it this way, sorry. This will be better. Let's deal with what we know already. So what we have to find is a 3 to 3.5. Okay, I'll put that on top. And what we, what we know about is a 2 to 3 bar. Okay, so we're dealing with the, the width of the bar and the height of the bar. Okay, now the 2 to 3 bar, we know the, the width is 1 centimeter. And that's representing, you've got, you can say, 1 centimeter represents... Okay, one unit, right? And for the um, the the height of the bar is four centimeters. So we can say four centimeters represents a frequency density of eight. It's for the for the two to three bar. Okay, eight eight units frequency density. Now for the that's for the two to three bar, right? Now for the um, 3 to 3.5 bar, all right, we want to know how many centimeters, let's say W centimeters, represents a half a unit, because it's 3 to 3.5, the width is half a unit. 
Okay, and for the height of the bar, okay, we want to know how many centimeters represents a frequency density we found was 34. Right? The frequency density is 34 there. So we can use a simple proportion. We can say for the width, W, the width of the bar is going to be basically 0 0.5, 1 times 0 0.5 over 1. And the height of the bar is going to be 4 times 34 divided by 8. 4 times 34 divided by 8. Just simple proportion here. Okay, so let's just calculate what that gives us. So we've got 4 times 34. 4 multiplied by 34 divided by 8. And that gives us 17. So the height is 17 units. Okay, so that's 17 centimeters. Okay, so those are the answers for part A of this question. Okay, and I'm going to go on to part B in a minute. Okay, so part B it says use linear interpolation to estimate the, um, the median weight of these babies. Okay, so we want to find the median weight. Alright, so we know from the question that there are 50 babies born at the hospital. Okay, so the total of the frequency is 50. So we know that from the from the first sentence of the question. They told us that the frequency is the total frequency is 50. Okay, so the number of babies is 50. So the total is 50. Okay, so we want to find the the, the median weight. We want to find the weight of the the baby which is 25th in line. When they're, when they're arranged in order of size, okay? And these, you can see, are arranged in order of size. Of course, we can't find the actual median because we don't know the actual weights. But we can say the 25th, the, the 50th, if there's 50 babies, you do 50 divided by 2, which is 25. We're looking for the 25th entry, okay? We don't have to do n plus 1 over 2, or we say, oh, 25th, so we're going to look at the 25th and the 26th, because we don't know the actual weight, so we're just estimating. If we knew the actual individual weights of every baby, then we would do uh, deal with it as if as discrete data. When you've got continuous data, you just take the total and divide it by two to find the median, and you take that value, whether it's a fraction, whether it's a decimal, it doesn't matter, you take it as it is. Okay, so we're looking for the 25th entry. Now we've got a first pinpoint where it is. Now you've got nine. If you look at you've got one, then you've got plus eight, nine. This is like the cumulative frequency. Then you've got nine plus seventeen, which is twenty-six. So we know that the group that contains a median is three to three point five. The 25th entry is definitely here, okay? Because by the end of it, you're on the 26th. At the start of it, you're on the 9th, okay? So if we just make a little line to do linear interpolation here, that will help us. Okay, at the start and the end. Okay, on the top, I'm going to put the categories from 3 to 3.5. Okay, and Q2 is going to be somewhere over here. It's like somewhere closer to this side. Okay, and... The, we're looking at the bottom at, at which entry we're at. So the beginning we're the ninth entry, at the end we're on the 26th entry. There's 17 entries altogether in that group, as you can see from there. So we're looking for the 25th entry, which is, you can see, 16 entries along. Okay, so we can say that the, the median, which is called Q2, is equal to 3 plus, it's something more than 3, but it's this fraction, which is 16 seventeenths of the width of this bar, which is 0 0.5. Okay, that's how, how far along the median is this particular range. Okay, because the 25th entry is 16 terms along out of 17 terms. So you make it like a fraction, a proportion. Okay, so there, therefore we're going to just do 3 plus 16 over 17. and multiplied by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and that will give us 3.4705, 3.4705, 3.4705, which we round to 3SF, gives us 3.47 kilograms, and there's our answer, that's Q2, okay? So that's how to find an estimate of the median, okay? And next we're going to find how to, f to find the estimate of the